Hey, good morning. Pastor Chris here. Welcome to the Poolside Chat. It is not Saturday night. I fell asleep after work. Uh, so, anyway, glad I'm here today. Question came up this week. Uh, a lot of the talk from people I know have been about Trump and the assassination. And there's one thing that I did want to mention. Chief Comparator, Chief Corey Comparator, the fire chief who was killed at that attempted assassination. <clears throat> um, when he heard the bullets and he threw himself on top of his daughters to protect them, took the bullet. People are rightly amazed. But what I've heard is, I wonder if I, the men talking, I wonder if I could do that. And, and what came out of this is what makes someone throw themselves on top of somebody to protect them at risk of their own life. And I heard more than one person ask this. I wonder if I would be able to do that. I wonder if I would do that. I wonder what I would do. So there are a couple of things that I want to share with you um, that hopefully may explain this. There was a period of my life, probably, good gosh, maybe then like a four month period of time when I was like the first person on a scene of something that happened, um, I was at a retirement community I used to work at. You drive through the community, you come down the road and it comes to a T intersection and there's a building right beyond the T over the little grass knoll. Cars coming up to the stop sign, blows through the stop sign, there's a lady standing there, I see her fall and the car runs into the building. So my first thought is, holy cow, he ran, I knew her, he ran over my friend. She fell out of the way, so she was okay. I went to check on the driver and he was a sudden death. But I called 911, busted open the window, and it's just what I had to do. Another time, same community. I don't know how long this happened, a month, couple weeks. I push the button for the elevator. No, no, I'm on the elevator. When the door opens, there's a guy in a wheelchair who's fallen over, and another sudden death. So I check pulses, yell for help, beat on doors, somebody calls 911. So CPR. Saw a bike wreck. Um, lady must have hit a hole or something but anyway she tumbled over and got all bloodied up so I pull my car over that shows on the other side of the road so I U-turn pull my car over and stop and help her I mean a lot happened her this time another time car crashed in with a phone pole as I'm driving home right behind me so I turn right, go into the shopping center, park and walk up. People are fine. But I remember at this time, I'm starting to get mad because I'm noticing, why isn't anyone else stopping? And then another one happened. Somebody hit those, uh, you know, those big orange and white barrels you see on the highway. I don't know if it was drunk, medical, I don't know. But anyway, saw a lady hit those barrels. I know what they're filled with, water. Because you hit them going 60 miles an hour, it's like this big water explosion, it's very dramatic. And then she ran into a wall, one of those Jersey walls. So, again, nobody stopped. And I asked the same question.
I think there's something you need to know about the fire chief. Chief Comparator. He was in the military and you learn how to act under stress. You learn how to watch out for those who watch out for others, I guess the best way to put it. And being in the fire service, you do this every day. Fighting fires, saving people who you don't know. And there's always a risk with this. So you're kind of taught and learn this. It's brought out. But what makes one person stop and help? What makes one person protect at their own expense? And I think a lot of this comes together. I think some of it you're born with. Because I shared those stories about me because I have to stop because I can't do anything else. It would be worse to be able to help and not. If that makes sense. But there's also something else, and this applies to Christians, followers of Christ, where you put others above yourself. One of the things that we do as Christians is we learn to elevate others above ourselves to become what's called, you know, now it's a, a, a man or was a management buzzword, servant leadership. You lead through serving. But we do this because that's the example that Christ gave us, Jesus gave us. And I want to read something. This is Philippians 2. Starting verse 1. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united... Oh, excuse me. Verse 6. Verse 6. Who... This is referring to God, Jesus. Being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking on the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself. This is part of what a Christian is. We become a servant, we humble ourselves, we don't elevate ourselves above others. And by doing that, part of that identity is that your mindset is what you saw on Chief Comparator. That others are more valuable and important than you are. That you do everything to stand up and protect those who can't protect themselves. That you lift others up. And I think all that together is why he threw himself on his family. One, it's his daughters. As I thought when I first heard this, I thought it was a girl dad. That's what dads do. Two, I think it's something you're born with. Three, I think it's something that the services he was in, the military and the fire service, recognizes, builds up, teaches, trains, encourages, rewards, and becomes part of your being. And then four, it has said that he is a follower of Jesus Christ, a Christian. And that mindset goes in him like Jesus. You have to do that. So, an answer to the question for men who say, I wonder if I will be there when that moment comes. I would dare say most guys will. And I don't know if that's true or not. Because I see the stories of the guys who do. 
And maybe that's what the focus is. I'm sure there are ones where they don't. I'm sure. But I think most guys will. Because when you put others before you, you can't do anything else. My thoughts? And uh, Philippians chapter 2. Check it out. All right, guys, that's what I got. A uh, little long winded today, but thanks for listening. Remember, Facebook, YouTube, Rumble, at FL Compass Church. Um, keep the questions coming. This was a really, really good one. And, uh, and now on Instagram at FL Compass Church. Have a wonderful Sunday. See you Wednesday.